and welcome to Pitch to Screen Podcast. I am your host, Kelly Thorne. Today, we'll be talking with an incredibly talented writer, director, creator, and all-around cool dude, Saba Jipkovic. Sava is based in Belgrade, Serbia, and he is a CG animator with a decade and a half of experience in the field. His independent short, Irradiation, was chosen as a Vimeo Editor's Pick of the Week, and he has gained such notoriety as uh, doing his self-produced work that he's parlayed his passion into a full-time position at the illustrious award-winning animation and VFX companies Access Studios and Hydra Studios. He's also done work on game cinematics for the video game Diablo Immortal, which has surpassed $525 million in player spending. Uh, at some point, though, we're going to have to stop talking about all of his amazing credentials and start talking to him. So, Sava, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into the film industry? Um, sure. Well, thanks. Thanks for having me. Um, yes, it's been it's been a while. Um, I've uh, studied interior and furniture design, and that's kind of where I got introduced to uh 3D. So I got into filmmaking through through animation. So that's kind of how I picked it up. Uh, I started like very, very simple, just kind of, you know, u- using architecture as subject matter and animation and kind of doing very, very basic short films with that. Um, and then things kind of expanded little by little. Um, kind of I started expanding the team. I started collaborating with friends that I shared kind of in the early days of freelancing. I shared um, a co-working space with a couple of friends and um, uh, one of my friends, uh, Milan, who is a concept artist, uh, he was always you know, drawing all these amazing designs uh, of characters and sci-fi stuff. And I always wanted to kind of make that and vice versa. He always wanted to see his stuff move. So eventually, like we we ended up making something and uh, that led to kind of one of the first like proper, what I would call a proper short film that I've done. And the first time that I've, I've kind of had the courage to credit myself as a director, because it always felt a little bit like, I don't know, it always felt weird um, because it was always like more of a hobby than anything. Um, but I, I I made that short and uh, that got kind of a good reaction online. And uh, I was immediately after that uh, sort of contacted by a couple of studios and uh, one of the studios, Access Studios from UK, who specializes in uh, game cinematics, um, they're the ones that I still kind of collaborate with today. Um, and that's kind of how my whole directing career sort of kicked off. So because I have a bunch of, um, you know, kind of previous experience with CGI and animation on my own, um, I still do kind of, I still do that kind of balancing act where I do a bunch of client work through Axis. Uh, but I also, you know, the, the small team that I mentioned, you know, through my friends, and collaborators have grown significantly over the years. So we're we're able to do other stuff on our own. So I kind of run my independent production as well. In this this short film that you're referencing, it's irradiation, right? No, no, that's way, oh. way after that. So so oh, okay. the, the, the one I'm referencing is IFCC. So that was done in 2017. Um, and it was done, it's like a short sci-fi uh film made as a conference opener. So there was a conference in Croatia called IFCC, and uh, we used the the short film almost like as a title sequence to open the conference and to announce all of the speaker, uh, all the speakers coming there. But uh, it was like a structured, you know, short film. It was uh, it was uh, purely kind of visual storytelling. Um, and it's still very, very near and dear to me this day. It's it's probably one of the more fun experiences I've had uh, creating something because it was it was like. It was no pressure, right? Like that was the days when we were just starting out and uh, it was just a bunch of friends like coming together to figure stuff out and to have fun. There was no expectation. Like I didn't make that short to get the director's job, right? Like I I, I made it because I wanted to have fun. Um, and then as it turned out, I ended up getting a director's job out of that. So that, that was great. <laughs> but I think, uh, and it, uh, obviously that's fantastic, but uh, you know, I think if if I went in with a different set of expectations, I don't know if things might have worked out differently. I, I don't know. So since this since this is pitched to screen, um, could you talk to us a little bit more about pitching and mm-hmm. how you? I mean, first we'll talk about like how you come up with a concept, and then how mm-hmm. you go about pitching a, a, a project. And um, and then how you get that to screen and how how that's working for you. Those are three questions in one go. <laughs> Uh, all right, speed round. Um, 
so so yeah so it, it it depends it varies like like it's i guess it's a different process for you know the stuff that i do when i make my own films uh with my own kind of independent production and that's that's a much different process but when it comes to client work through access uh it also varies on the on the setup so we might like for example dead island is a game that exists like this is a sequel so there's already a, an established kind of look and feel to the game there's already an established you know, art direction, there's an established tone, like I've just mentioned. So we're getting into it with a lot of, like, we're getting a lot of uh, information from the client early on, even before we start. So it's not so much of an open book, uh, for example, like you get quite a, quite a lot of kind of distilled information that you get to work with. Um, other projects might be more of an open book, like, hey, here's a world, we don't have any kind of uh, specific directions for you or ideas of kind of what we want the trailer to look like. Because again, like, well, all I'm talking about here is my experience from Axis, which is mostly game cinematics and game trailers specifically. Um, but but the, the experience can vary between those two where sometimes you would get a more kind of distilled idea of kind of which direction they want to go, they want to move in in terms of the, the, the kind of the look and the feel of the trailer. And sometimes it's more of an open book where it's like, hey, like this is the world and you know, feel free to give us your impression of it and feel free to give us your your idea of it. There's uh, one uh, good example of that is the trailer for the Outriders, which uh, that was kind of exactly um, that sort of an idea where we got the world and I, then I got to sit down and write my own treatment and kind of how I imagined this trailer to look and feel like. Um, so yeah, it, it just it just varies. It's a little bit different, you know, from for a starting point. So yeah. you said uh, the IFC, right? Was the one IFCC, yeah, yeah. IFCC, yeah. that's the one the that that really maybe launched you. Is that what yeah. you? Yeah. So so talk to me maybe about your. I know you said it was more ragtag. You weren't even trying to be a director. You're just just going with yeah. your gut, and it just sort of came out of you. Uh, maybe about your creative process from that, and then how that launched your career. Right. So that was kind of done in that time when I mentioned I was sharing a co-working space with a bunch of friends. Um, and all of us shared this kind of, you know, joint passion of film and we wanted to do something together. And uh, we all shared, you know, we, we all came from different backgrounds. So like I would say the core creative team was myself, Milan, the concept artist, and uh, Iz, who is the composer, but he also performed the character uh, in the motion capture. Uh, so that's a funny, funny little inside <laughs> story there. But um, we all came from different backgrounds, but it, we all had kind of very similar taste uh, in film and uh, in kind of, I guess, the style of filmmaking. And uh, that was kind of just our our desire to try and tell a story. And uh, because we were so early and you know young in it, um, you know, it was the first time where we kind of came uh, across a kind of fairly concise uh, description of Joseph, Joseph Campbell's The Hero's Journey. And that was kind of what ended up being like the building blocks and kind of uh, the, you know, the, the the building blocks around which we built the story for, for IFCC. I'm reading uh, it right now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah it's yeah, amazing. Yeah. I love, I am obsessed with Joseph Campbell. It, it's pretty. Well, yeah. He's pretty no. He's pretty fantastic. I I, I love the book. Uh, I I'm 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 more of a fan of. Uh, I've, I I'm in the process of kind of you know revisiting some of the kind of screenwriting and story books. Uh, still, Robert McKee for me like takes the highlight. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but but yeah. yeah but yeah. but that was that was that was like a very you know in in the time where, you know we we none of us were kind of um you know none of us went to film school none of us all we knew was our taste and um and kind of that was a very interesting time i think we were making that short for like six months i think and uh like myself i didn't take any work for those six months i just basically took a risk and uh i just wanted to kind of focus on this um and um Oh, luckily, like it turned out um, good, but um, yeah, that's that's kind of how it started. Um, so if you could tell us, like anyone that's just beginning in their in their creative journey, what what could you what would you say to them? Uh, any advice, or if you could look back at your younger self and and tell them, tell your younger self, like any advice that you that you would have. Oh man, that's that's a difficult one because I, I feel I have a different answer for my younger self and for anyone else. Um, I think like 
potentially what I would say to my younger self is maybe maybe go directly to live action <laughs> instead of animation. Uh, maybe, I don't know. Um, I mean, animation has been fantastic and I absolutely love animation. My, my ultimate goal is live action. Uh, and I actually shot a live action short last year. So that's still in, uh, in, in kind of, uh, develop in, sorry, post-production. Um, but, uh, but yeah, uh, for, for anyone else, I would just say probably is like the, you know, be patient. Uh, this stuff takes a lot of time, whether it's live action or animation or whatever it is, it just takes a lot of time, um, you know, plan for the long game, um, build a thick skin, but maybe build um, also a sense of empathy. Um, and uh, don't forget to have fun, probably above everything. I think you can you can easily get distracted into kind of the seriousness of it all it can from time to time be but uh you know i i find myself from time to time having to remind myself like hey you know kind of don't don't forget to have fun like this is still pretty this is still pretty fun you know what you do what what you're doing so um yeah have you faced a, a moment that's particularly challenging in your career and then how did you how did you get over that hurdle i think the biggest honestly like the biggest problems that i kind of faced or just the the age old question of you know work versus life balance when it comes to filmmaking and how do you find that um i think that's something that do you have an answer like <laughs> i don't so like if, if you if you find an answer please tell me uh, i'm trying to find it um so so yeah um that's probably the biggest uh to be perfectly perfectly honest I, I I am learning though. I'm kind of taking it um, a little bit slower uh, in the last year or so. Watching your work is phenomenal. I cannot wait to see the the feature length of uh, of uh, the work, the trailers that you created because they're phenomenal. Well, thank you, thank you for having me. I I yeah, um, thanks for the for the interview. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate your time. Uh -huh.